Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Great time. Just wondering whether anyone else has similar experiences in pseudo time travel to mine. To explain my experience, I will tell you the story of when I went the furthest back, as well as the first time I remember clearly. Not that it's overly interesting. I was around 13, living in the countryside, and late for swimming lessons. So my dad, who was driving me there, said he would run in and apologize to the coach for being late, while I would shower and change. We got there about 10, 15 minutes late and I booked it into the guy's locker room and got changed and showered. I barely had a chance to even notice that it was too empty of both people and bags before I burst into the swimming pool proper and tried to give an apology before getting cut off by the coach telling me to sit down and wait. I did so while catching my breath and getting my bearings. That's when I noticed all the things that were off about my surroundings. It was not my class being taught, it was the one before it, that I had expected to be hogging all the shower heads. I looked at the wall clock that was telling me it was 1547, while the dashboard in the car had read 1613 when we parked. I thought briefly that the clock in the car had been wrong before noticing that my dad had yet to arrive in the bleachers. Then I began thinking about the abandoned look of the locker room and realized that I could not picture any colors in my memory of running through there. Not the baby blue of the lockers, not the brown of the benches, not even the dark blue of my trunks. As I waited for practice to begin, my coach began making small talk while the water in there were given some free time to play around to end things off. I remember vividly having to stammer out some bullshit story about my dad having an errand in town to explain why I was there so early, all the while feeling more and more surreal as I kept expecting my dad to arrive. Sometime later while we were practicing turning, I looked up at the large wall clock again to realize that it read 1613. I stopped and pretended to be catching my breath while I looked over to the bleacher entrance. Very shortly after my dad entered, I waved to get his attention and when I got it, I simply shook my head. He looked perplexed as he sat down, and I got back to training. Nothing more of interest really happened that day, but neither my dad nor I have any idea what happened. It's happened several times during my life since then. Say I just noticed I'm nearly late for a bus, so I sprint to the station only to have to wait 10 minutes for it. This specifically happened once with a good friend of mine in college and high school. Well, the local form of education for ages around 16 to 20-ish, when I was going to stay over at his place to finish an assignment. We were talking after classes when we saw we only had five minutes to catch the bus, when he checked the clock on his phone, so we ran straight to the bus station without even time to talk. We got there about 20 minutes early. My friend complained about having to wait, as if he didn't realize the oddity of the situation. I had told him about this phenomenon before, so I confronted him about what happened, and he finally seemed to realize that it was odd to arrive before leaving and checked his phone for the time again, only to confirm that even the same phone that said we had to hurry hard reset its clock. Being curious since it was my first and only time bringing someone else back, I asked him how he'd seen the run to the station, only to have him stare blankly at me for a moment before telling me he could not remember it at all. I pressed him a bit for any shred of information, so he focused harder for a bit before he admitted that trying to remember only made him feel sick, nauseous, his head aching and dizzy. I stopped asking about it and made idle small talk until we had boarded the bus, where I made a quip about it being good that we ran to the station when we did, but too bad about the long wait for the bus or something stupid like that. I remember how his eyes almost seemed to glaze over for a second before he chuckled and agreed. I was a bit freaked out so I asked him whether he remembered how I told him that I sometimes arrived somewhere before I left, and he just said, yeah, why? Have you ever experienced anything similar? Can't say that ever I have, as I believe I told you before why. I just replied with never mind. Still bothers me how his mind seems to actively block out this event. I have since then asked him about it several times and he remembered if asked directly and pressed a bit but he always tries to deflect the question subconsciously at first, before then seeming shocked that he could forget something like that. 
He also forgets the conversations about it almost as soon as you begin talking about something else. I don't bring it up anymore since it seemed as more and more of a shock every time I'd brought it up, until he finally told me he simply wished to forget it altogether, so he wouldn't know how little control he had of his mind. Anyway, thanks if you read through my ramblings and please tell me if you've experienced anything even remotely similar. By the way, I decided to write this and ask about it, because it's been happening more lately. It's down to every few weeks. I have a little story. After work at like 2 a.m., I was on my way in the car to my parents' house. It's 45 minutes one way, and in the best conditions you arrive around 5 minutes early. Of course, you need to drive really fast, which I almost always do. That night, I drove very fast again. I was in a rush. I arrived after 20 minutes. It's 100% not possible. I can't explain that to myself. Of course I was fast, but saving zero minutes is clearly not possible. It would mean I have to drive double the normal speed, and that's not possible because I drove at my car's limit, 160 kilometers an hour, and I always do that at night. I just don't know how that could happen. I remember the rush pretty good. I also remember I could not remember the part after leaving the city, where I work until I arrived the two-way road. Hello everyone. I have a bit of a weird theory and I was wondering if anyone relates to the idea. Essentially, I have aphantasia but I don't think I always had it. I know for a fact that I had a hyperactive imagination as a kid and teenager. In fact, I only realized I had the condition about two years ago. A lot of people were talking about time travel and time resetting recently and I wanted to share some strange things that happened to me. When I was around grade seven, I had a very vivid dream. I don't usually remember dreams, but this was a dream that was also an out-of-body experience. I was sent above to what looked like a somewhat heavenly realm. I couldn't hear anything, even though through my body language and another's, I was clearly having a conversation. I never had a dream that vivid again in my life. My hypothesis is that aphantasia is a condition that's necessary for those who travel back in time to ensure they don't consciously visualize the experiences they would have had in a timeline in the future. However, the unconscious is not blind, and these individuals would go through strong degrees of deja vu throughout the time, from when they're sent back to the moment they reach back to the point where they would have been sent back. I know this sounds like a stupid idea, but from the time I was a kid to teen, I didn't care about a lot of things and was pretty immature and intellectually shallow. However, from the time I reached around grade 11 to now, I seem to have gained a strange fire within that strived for knowledge, both philosophical and natural, as well as spiritual and esoteric. At this time, I had a strange fascination with conspiracies as well, despite being generally down to earth. I was wondering if anyone with aphantasia has had a similar experience. Everything happens simultaneously. The time space of your existence is not who you really are by gaining awareness. You actually dissolve the veil of time and you become aware of what you are and you become aware that everything, including time, is just you playing a game according to your rules. The best way I've seen to compress or alter space-time is via meditation. You simply shift your awareness, time travel, or you change the rules of your game, reality hacking shifting. This is your world anon, literally. My mother and her family, which consisted of her parents and older sister, lived between the cities of Reedsville and Greensboro in North Carolina. One day they had an errand in Reedsville, and on their way there they saw an older couple walking on the opposite side of the road. A couple of hours later, leaving Reedsville on their way home, they saw the same couple in the same spot heading in the same direction as before, almost as if they had been walking on a treadmill having gained no ground at all. They pulled up and asked if they needed a lift, and they said they were trying to get to Greensboro to the bus station. My grandfather agreed to take them there, but first, they would have to go home to be there in time to pick up their oldest daughter from the school bus near their house. Once inside the car, it became painfully obvious that they were poorly dressed for the cold, icy weather. 
The woman was wearing a summer dress and sandals, and the man a shirt and bib overalls and shoes along with a brimmed hat. My mother, being a small child, sat between her parents in the front seat, but turned around facing the couple staring at the strangers as children do, taking in their appearance. The one thing that stood out in her mind was the man's piercing blue eyes. The man reached into his pocket and handed her a red pencil with Coca-Cola written on it. When they reached home, it was decided that they would have lunch with the couple, who said they were the Bradleys, before the drive to Greensboro. Considering their clothing, my grandmother decided to give them more appropriate winter clothing and coats and shoes for the woman who only had sandals. Grandmother also decided to pack them snacks and sandwiches for their trip. With their guests well-fed and with warmer clothing and snacks, everyone piled into the car to take them to Greensboro. Halfway on their trip, the Bradleys insisted that they needed to be let off on a bridge on old U.S. Highway 29. Grandfather protested, saying no, they would likely not get another ride, and being winter it would be getting dark soon, and insisted on carrying them all the way. But they said, no, they must be left off on the bridge. A sort of back and forth occurred between my grandfather and the Bradleys, with them asking to please be let off on the bridge. Unable to change their mind, he obliged and stopped the car. They opened the door and got out and immediately disappeared, leaving the door still open. My grandfather was horrified, jumping out of the car, looking to see if they had fallen down on the ice out of his view. But they were nowhere to be found. He looked all about and called for them, but nothing but silence. The whole area was clear as far as he could see, but still nothing. He got back in the car with his family, severely upset and confused as to what just happened, as was everybody else. Frantically, they drove up and down the road looking for them, wondering if they had somehow got another ride, trying to rationalize the obviously spectacular disappearance of the Bradleys. After a fruitless search, they drove back home confused as to what had occurred. This made a huge impression on my mother, having distinctly remembered the incident all her life. So the question remains, who were the Bradleys? Were they ghosts? But ghosts don't stay all afternoon with you and eat lunch. Furthermore, when they disappeared, the clothes given to them disappeared as well even the sandwiches that were packed for them. This suggests that they were solid beings. Also, why did they insist on being let off on the bridge, saying it must be done? Was it some sort of portal or gateway home? The whole thing remains a mystery. Hi guys. Two weekends ago, there was a large concert in my town, small town, which is not in the USA, and many people treated it as an overnight event, although I was not planning to stay the whole night, only wanted to see one or two of the acts. Just after 6.30pm Saturday, the first band started to play, and I started to feel really weird. It was already pretty dark at that time, but I felt that it was almost too dark. I told one of my friends that I was going back home, and would come back at around 11pm, when the first band I wanted to see was to start playing. I know the band that was playing, but I did not recognise the song. It freaked me out a lot, and I was extremely scared of walking past the stage, which unfortunately I had to do to get to the exit to my car. Anyway, crossed the field, past the stage and out through the pavilions, it is a sports stadium, and then you come into a courtyard of sorts. If you look directly out of the entrance of the pavilion, you will see a row of buildings which sell snacks and stuff, so you have to turn left on a path which is leading to the bathrooms where some people were standing. One guy was looking really weird, and I felt paranoid as he was watching me intently. Opposite the bathroom is a very small patch of grass, which was fitted with three or four benches, and I walked as far around the guy the whole time he looked at me, and I remember thinking he was going to charge me, which he didn't. The music was still freaking me the hell out. Sounded almost like chanting more than actual music. So behind the bathroom on the right of the path, there is a large wall which is part of the pavilion which extended past, forming a sort of hallway with the fence on the left almost like the entrance of a prison and at the end of the path you had to turn left through the gate leading to the parking lot. Here is where it gets freaky. I was walking just past the guy but I did not look back at him and as I came close to the gate I just remember looking up to the sky and suddenly it was bright daylight, the music was gone and the noise of the people as well. There was still some music playing, but the crowd sounded smaller, my phone was beeping, 
and I took it out and it read exactly 3.30 p.m. Sunday, the 1st of May. There were some people around, but not a lot, and most were on their way out. No one was reacting strangely to me being there, and I was really freaked out. I ran to my car, which was still where I left it. I still had all my possessions, and I was not hurt in any way. My phone had a few missed calls and a voicemail from my friend asking if I was okay, but nothing felt out of the ordinary. I sat in my car listening to my voicemail when I got a weird feeling again, but instead of fear, it was an intense dread, and I remember feeling that I just wanted to be home. I do not know where those missing hours went. I did blood tests, there were no drugs in my system, and I am totally healthy. Brain scans show no brain aneurysm or anything. I was not hurt, and as I said, none of my possessions were stolen. My car was also perfectly fine, and one of my friends even sent me a text asking if I was at the stadium, as he could swear he saw my car as they left at 4am on Sunday. What do you think happened? And please, no Mandela effect or aliens, everything is still the same, except I lost almost a full day. I never really browse slash x slash, but thought a real life experience of mine with the paranormal would interest you guys. Here goes it. 2004 in third grade. Absolute non-believer in ghosts think it's silly. I moved schools to an old house in Pennsylvania. Move in, unpack, nothing out the ordinary for first couple months. Start to notice noises in the house, creaking, house noises, etc. Disregard. More months go by, it starts to become more frequent and much more bizarre. Still disregard. Then, shit happened. Playoff game, Steelers vs. Titans. One o'clock kickoff, maybe two, I don't know. Family making food, water running, power working. Everyone comes out of the kitchen to see the kickoff. A loud, loud bang came from the empty kitchen. My brother enters the kitchen, shouts, What the hell? Oh shit, dot Avi. Enter the kitchen. Every goddamn cabinet is wide open. Every single one. Impossible to have been opened at the same time. We're mostly shut when everyone left. Water is no longer running. The family is visibly confused and shaken. Nobody has any idea what to make of it. The day continues as usual. We brush it off. We began to suspect something paranormal was up, but I didn't believe it until the next experience, which ended after we got the house cleansed. 10 o'clock at night, on a Monday. Shitty Pennsylvania weather. Home with my brother, nobody else. In my living room. Chilling. Watching TV being dumb child as usual. Hear the doorbell ring. Go walk to the front door, which has a large window in which you can see the entire porch. Nobody at the door. Open the door. Nobody is there. Meh, whatever. Sit back down. The doorbell rings three times in quick succession. Get up and go to answer. Nobody there. Open the door. Nobody there. Start back down the hall. The doorbell rings again, right behind me, and continues to ring. Turn around. Nobody is there. The doorbell is still ringing. Open door. Doorbell is still ringing. So go get brother. Get a screwdriver and remove the door handle. Probably faulty. As we sit down, the door is knocked on. Three times. Nobody is there. As we stare at the closed door, it is knocked on again. Nobody is on my porch. Code Brown is coming. We open the door. Nobody is there and lock the door. Go sit down. Brother and I are very confused and wonder what the hell is going on. We are talking about it in my living room. Hear our front door get knocked on again. I creep around the corner to the sight line of the door. Nobody there. Call brother over. Three loud knocks help dot JPEG. We are staring in disbelief. The doorknob begins to shake. The door begins to shake. Bolt downstairs. Grab a baseball bat and an airsoft gun. Run upstairs. Everything is quiet. Open the door and sweep the houses outside. Nobody has been around the house. No car in the driveway. No grass has been disturbed. Freak out. The next day we found a small puddle of blood outside of the doorway, with no trail or drops around it. Got the house cleansed over the weekend and hung crosses. Never had anything happen again. Time travel. Switch into a parallel universe. Unsure. Has anyone else ever experienced this? A few years ago, I regularly experienced some kind of phenomenon I can't really explain other than maybe time travel or traveling between alternate universes over very minuscule things. 
I was able to only change the outcome of, say, a particular event, but only after it happened, and it required a lot of concentration in the matter, which I recently found out was basically meditation. I wasn't able to experience what happened prior or during the event I wanted to change, and I wasn't able to remember what happened in this alternate scenario, but it did work, but sometimes it didn't. I completely forgot that I used to do this, like it was pushed out of me by some force, but I just woke up, and I did this in my dream, except in my dream, I was able to experience what happened prior, and during the event, I was looking to change which is exactly what I was never able to do. All I really remember of this is that I was only able to change certain things, small things. For example, if I messed up asking a girl out, I wasn't able to change that, but let's say I hit my nose on a pole while walking with friends or something, I'd be able to change that. With my friends all saying it never happened. All I used to do was just try to focus on the event before going to bed and only on that, and the fact that I wanted to change it but I was never able to dictate what would happen, and most of the time nothing did, but when it did happen, it was mind-blowing. Has anyone else ever experienced something like this? Is it a way to switch between the infinite alternate universes? Is this method limited by personal choice? I'm unsure what to think or even classify this as. I want to say time travel, but I don't recall anything that happened during travel, only getting to experience the result while not being able to decide what it is all the time. I'm pretty sure my old high school was haunted. Be me. 15. Second period is English class, which I skip to go hang out and chill around in the library. The librarian is this weird lady with a neck tattoo who usually doesn't give a damn what students do there so long as there's no messes or anyone trying to look up porn on the computers. This was in 1999, and for some reason we had kids at my school try and do this at least every few weeks. Chilling in the far back of the library, taking a nap in a chair. Wake up eventually and look up at the ceiling, See this giant bulbous glass the librarian keeps around. There's a few of them, actually, and see a girl. Oh, today's Anon's lucky day, right? I get up to go hit on this girl. I didn't even see her face. All I saw was the back of her. Long brownish hair, dressed normally, etc. I walk directly over to where I see her staring at a shelf of books. When I get there, she's gone. Look around, no one is in sight. I go to some guy nearby and ask him if he'd seen the girl pass him by. Where he'd been sitting there would have been no way for him not to notice. He wasn't listening to anything. Get kind of spooked. Walk out of the library as the period ends. Eventually ask the librarian if she'd seen anyone who matched the description of a brown-haired girl who had checked any books out. Nothing. It's like the girl I saw was never there. She was either a ghost or I experienced a time slip and saw someone in the past for a brief moment or something. Later, however, I got spotted by the English teacher, a brat who I'd been in first period with ratted me out. I've experienced some weird shit around Liverpool, been to see some friends on Lark Lane. I decided to call it a night and stroll to St. Michael's Station with my mate. It's deadly quiet on Southwood Road. While me and my friend are talking, loud noise drowns our voices out. Don't realize what's happening straight away, so we keep walking. Both have stopped talking, absent-mindedly waiting for loud noise to stop. Loud noise is thousands of kids playing, like a school playground. As suddenly as the sound appeared, it disappeared, fading out to absolute silence again. It was close to midnight, no kids anywhere to be seen. Friend confirms he heard kids playing all around us too. We may have experienced an audio time slip or something when there used to be a school or orphanage on Southwood Street. I don't think this was a time slip, but I'll share it anyway. I was out camping in the woods I've hunted since I was a kid. I got a camp set up appropriately three miles in, had a fire going, tent and an orange vest hung in a tree. 
It's a good spot that I've camped at many times, also one of the only flat spots out there. About an hour before dusk, I decided to walk to the end of the peninsula and see if I could jump a deer. I made it to where I had a deer stand, of course some asshole stole it, even though I had it chained and locked. I turned back towards camp. I should make it before dark. Two hours later, I'm out on the other side of the woods. How did I miss my camp? The terrain forces you to walk right by the campsite. There is no way I missed it, didn't smell smoke, see tents, or the orange vest I hung up. So here I am in the dark, two miles or more from my camp without a flashlight. I'm not scared of shit, so back into the woods. Before I made it back, I could smell the smoke and eventually see the fire. There is no way in hell that I didn't see my camp. It just wasn't there when I came back from hunting. But was there when I returned, maybe it was time, but I'm thinking dimensional. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time. Remember to check the Odyssey and Rumble pages for separate archives of previous broadcasts.